in tremendous pain, and you can't seem to get there to help. It feels awful. You may even suspect that she might hurt herself, and that terrifies you. You're desperate to reach her, and she pushes you away. My daughter went through a dark place like this. She was in her late teens, and although we were able to get her to counseling, I wasn't sure how much it was helping. I was worried sick about her. I knew she was deeply depressed, maybe even suicidal, and I couldn't reach her. And the therapist wouldn't share anything with me. Of course, I understood that their discussions had to be confidential, but I just wanted to know that my daughter was okay. What's going on? Just a few years ago, our daughters were happy 10-year-olds, gleefully playing soccer or softball, taking dance lessons and creating crafts at the dining room table. How can these changes happen so suddenly? As one of my middle school students exclaimed at the end of seventh grade, what's the matter with this school? You come in here as a sixth grader and you're so happy. The world is great. And then by the end of seventh grade, you're miserable. Anyone who has lived or worked with teen girls has seen this transition take place. It seems to happen overnight. I remember my 12-year-old daughter melting down about something or other, dramatically launching her body against the kitchen wall as her nine-year-old sister and I stared in astonishment. My younger daughter turned towards me and asked, wide-eyed, Is that what's going to happen to me, Mom? As a researcher and teacher of self-compassion, I regularly get emails from parents of 11-year-old girls who are searching for answers. They've recently found out that their daughter is cutting or she's furiously dieting and they're concerned she's anorexic or she's been recently bullied on social media and now refuses to go to school, saying she has no friends. The parents are beside themselves, not knowing what to do who to turn to, or where to go. Often the parents who contact me feel like their child is the exception, the only one who is going through this. If they only knew how commonplace their story is. So what is going on? Why the sudden change in girls' emotional state at the cusp of their teen years? Unfortunately, we don't have definitive answers to this yet, but we do have a number of possible explanations, and likely the answer lies in the interaction of all of them. Emerging research has shown some evidence that sex differences may lie in genetics and that females are more likely to be predisposed to depression. When stressful events in childhood or early adolescence occur, the depression gene gets turned on, and girls take the depression dive. So what happens in early adolescence that pushes teen girls over the edge into depression? First, and perhaps most obvious, are biological changes. We know that puberty brings about changes in hormones, specifically increases in estrogen and testosterone in girls, which then cause the physical changes that we associate with the developing female body. Prior to puberty, girls and boys are equally likely to be depressed. But lo and behold, puberty sets in and hormones change. By the time they reach late adolescence, teen girls are twice as likely to become depressed as teen boys. And this difference in depression rates between males and females stays the same throughout adulthood until menopause. Then, estrogen levels drop, and surprise, surprise, men and women are now equally likely to be depressed again. But the relationship between estrogen and depression isn't so simple, and more recent research by Dr. Elizabeth Anderson at University of North Carolina has illuminated the nuances of this relationship. It turns out that estrone, a precursor to estrogen, can fluctuate from week